Dear viewer, if you're already a member of the facility, you know that as the administrator here, I am violently allergic to any kind of human interaction, and a place like Disneyland is the last place you'd ever find me. And yet, to Disneyland I went recently. Why? Well, I got a tip that there was some secret science hiding in Avengers Campus, more specifically inside of Peter Parker's web facility. So I went there and I saw, in fact, these whiteboards. Now these whiteboards were obviously written on by someone who knows what they're doing and are now Marvel canon. We could go through these for a number of episodes, but for World Quantum Day, I want to focus on this one. This specific whiteboard says that Doctor Strange's mystical, magical, hand movie fingery powers are not mystical or magically or fingery at all. Instead, they are quantum mechanics. You're just saying that because you're dead inside and find no whimsy in magic. Regardless of my aliveness insideness, I think that this whiteboard is actually right. How? Well, I know the guy that wrote on it. To Caltech! Now entering the facility. I'm taking my own Bifrost Bridge to the California Institute of Technology, where I am to visit a one Dr. Spiros Mihalakis, a quantum mathematician and science advisor to the stars. He is Marvel's personal quantum physicist, and he's advised on everything from Captain Marvel, all the new Spider-Man films, all the Ant-Man films, and he helped design with his scientific input the Avengers Campus at Disneyland California. Simply put, he is the best person to talk about anything that has to do with quantum mechanics and Marvel science. My name is... Well, you already know my name. I know, Kyle. but they don't know your name. My name is Spiros Mihalakis. Um, I am a manager of outreach here at the Institute for Quantum Information and Matter. It's a mouthful at Caltech. I am also a quantum physicist, uh, more like a mathematical physicist, actually. My PhD is in mathematics with a con concentration in quantum physics. I'm here today because you are also, I'd say, Marvel's resident quantum physicist. Mm. What have you worked on so far in the MCU? So it started with Ant-Man. I didn't know who Ant-Man was at the time when I got the, the call from the Science and Entertainment Exchange, which is part of the National Academy of Sciences. and. I was asked if I was willing to go to Atlanta, Georgia, fly it to Pinewood Studios mm. and consult on this new Marvel superhero movie, Ant-Man, and that maybe Paul Rudd would be there. I mean, I had no expectations. In fact, they told me on the call, like, probably he won't be there, you know, <laughs> he'll be too busy. It w when I arrived at, the, uh, um, at Pinewood Studios, they took me in this nondescript building up like an elevator that like you need the special, you know, access, right, to get to the third floor. There was this massive empty conference table and I thought it was a prank okay? because like there was no one there yeah. um, and I sat down I was just like going through my social media I guess on my phone and at some point a sweaty hand was like hey you know stop me in the back you must be Spiros and I turned around and it was Paul right <laughs> um, and we had a great time actually we spent like I don't know it feels like two hours and I was confused I was like this is the first time mm. I, I've ever seen a celebrity, right, and a star of like a Marvel movie be so invested in getting the science right. Hmm. And he was one of the writers. And that's, I think, also why the, the movie was so much fun. Yeah. Yeah. So I recently went to Disneyland, but I went to Disneyland. I went into a specific uh, area of Avengers Campus, which is the web uh, area. Spider-Man's and Peter Parker's little band of engineers. Yeah. And in that area, I saw a bunch of whiteboards. You told me you did those. Well, yeah, I had a meeting with uh, the uh, Imagineers, the Disney Imagineers, about four or five years ago now. In fact, I had a dinner with, with the person that designed everything just last night. Oh, shit. And, and it, was, it was pretty cool reminiscing about that. But yes, Disney brought us over to Disney Studios. And we sat down there for a couple of hours with a couple of others, like, you know, some astrophysicists, myself, and, you know, we tried to figure out what Avengers Campus would look like, right? How something otherworldly can exist in this world mm. and within the context of Disneyland already, yeah. right? That there is a transition at certain places between you're walking into a different world, almost like you're going into Asgard, right? Yeah. Even though there's still like a physical separation between the rest of, you know, 
the campus and Disneyland. Uh, one whiteboard specifically with Doctor Strange sequel coming out soon. I, I imagine one uh, you or another physicist had input on this. It says Doctor Strange quantum supercomputer question mark and I texted you immediately because yeah. I figured that either you did this or this is a decent explanation that you would like and so I kind of want to get into what you think about that being an explanation or a potential explanation or, or ballpark for Doctor Strange. So maybe the, diff the most difficult question today is can you give me a short summary of what quantum mechanics is? Sure. Um, quantum physics and quantum mechanics, which is more the mechanics aspect of the broader theory of quantum physics, mm. um, most people think of it as just the theory of physics that describes the very small and the very cold. But it turns out it's actually a theory of physics, more like a framework of knowledge itself, right? An epistemology, as you know, the Greeks would say, of how to know the world outside of you. And it's different from classical physics for a very simple reason, because the questions you're allowed to ask as you try to know what is out there, right, are much more interesting, much more complex than the ones that we can ask and have been asking automatically as human beings for thousands of years. And so quantum physics is, allows you, because of these types of special questions, to observe things that can be at two places at the same time, right, can travel backwards in time, can teleport, all these things. In fact, almost everything is possible once you understand what is going on with quantum physics, and then you try to walk back from that to engineer a universe through quantum computing, for example, um, that would otherwise be impossible, right? The natural order of things would just not create certain situations unless you know how to engineer them yourself. Mm. And that's why quantum physics is so cool, and I think also why they thought that, you know, maybe Doctor Strange is a quantum supercomputer, which is somehow even more powerful than a quantum computer. It's pretty damn powerful. It's, it's, the, it's the next state. The amazing thing is that if you think about just regular computers right now, and this is also the impetus for quantum computing over the past like three decades, at some point we've used, we've been so lazy, <laughs> you know, and we've thought, well, we'll just use electrons, right? These elementary charged particles that are orbiting, orbiting around like the nucleus of atoms. Uh, we'll just use these ones and in fact like billions of them. Are the that same. little thing you just did is how I recognize science people. Right. It's like, you have it orbiting, sorry, orbiting. Yeah, yeah. Because you, you want to take a digression. Uh, you don't, you're mm. not gonna let me. So no, I'm not we're going down that yeah. path where <laughs> you grab a bunch of these electrons and then when you have a lot of them and they go through some like special semiconducting, you know, gate, then it opens up and it allows them to go through all these billions of them. It's called like high voltage. And then you call that the one, mm. okay, in your computer. And if they're blocked, because you don't have enough of them, right, to go through, the voltage is low, the gate doesn't open and that's a zero. Mm -hmm. The advantage of this being how small and how precise you can be with these things such that you can fit a lot of this information processing yes into very small spaces, which allows for powerful e electronics, yeah. computers that aren't the size of whole buildings. Yes. But quantum mechanics isn't just about it being small. In fact, like, you know, it goes at a completely different level. It's the difference between having a supercar and having a spaceship. Mm. Okay, the supercar can never take you to the moon. Yeah. It's just, it's a different paradigm, it's not, it's, right? It's 2D versus 3D. Yes, exactly, and in fact, even though we've miniaturized like these CPUs to an extreme point, yeah. because we have done that, right, to try to pack as many as possible, the electrons now, because they're quantum objects and they have some, you know, space-like um, extent, they're not just little particles, it turns out, right, there's a probability of them being at many different places, delocalized as we call them, they can actually tunnel through these little gates I was talking about. Yes. So they no longer see them, right? Because as you make the gates smaller and smaller to fit more, on the, more of them in there, at some point the gates become almost at the level of like nano atoms and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, for all the weird stuff that happens with quantum mechanics, what makes a computer more interesting then? So this is what, uh, you know, that's the next step to this story, right? That this bug became a feature, 
right? You already alluded to that mm. bug that when you made things smaller, then all of a sudden you had to deal with the quantum nature, right? The wave-like nature, probabilistic nature of each of these things that we thought were like either here or not there, right? Yeah. But not the two places at the same time. Then all of a sudden you have to stop thinking about billions of little billion billiard balls, right, with charge, and then you have to start thinking about individually each one of them as a quantum object with intrinsic information within it, what yeah. we call a quantum bit of information. And not only that, but that there is very powerful relationships, correlations between these electrons. And even if you were to put not a billion of them, but just 300 of them together, and you know how to manipulate their state as they're talking and singing with each other, then you have a computer that is more powerful than anything we could ever create. In fact, the number of states, of classical states of a regular computer, such a computer could simultaneously hold and process, is more than the atoms in the visible universe. Thinking of Doctor Strange and the yeah. fact that this is tied in, this is <laughs> technically Marvel canon, I suppose? It's written if in, it's written like in Avengers, Avengers Campus. campus yeah. It must be real. Yeah. Uh, it must be real. So let me get, what, what's your first take on calling Doctor Strange a quantum, let's just say quantum computer. It's pretty computer. simple actually, what's going on. Oh, is it? Oh yeah. Um, remember when he's just sitting there and like, you know, in this yoga pose, Yes. right? And so this is, what I, this is what I'm thinking of too. Exactly, all the different po possible realities, right? In a couple million or whatever it was. Exactly. Um, what he's shifting through is the same way that a quantum computer has internally access to all these different states, mm -hmm. realities in quantum superposition is actually real. This is how the universe actually works, right? All these possibilities are very, very true, right? If you know how to observe them. If you can be like in a state where you change your point of view, you rotate your point of view. And, and that also explains what superposition really is. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing magical until you realize, I guess, what it takes to, to be a human in superposition. And then you're like, wow, that is pretty magical. But what it is, it's a simple shift in point of view. Okay, so imagine that you have a light bulb that can only be on or off. Okay, and this is how we observe the universe from our point of view. In many ways, the way that we understand information that comes in is relative to specific dimensions that are hard-coded in our human brains. Whether we see three dimensions of space, the same way for all of us, right? The one dimension of time, and so on and so forth. There are some specific preset, predetermined, it feels like, dimensions along which we decompose complex, you know, information that comes in and we say, okay, this is along this axis, which means it is a zero. If it's along this other axis, I'll call that a one, mm -hmm. right? But what happens if you're in between? What happens if there is a being that is shifted, their perspective yeah. is like at 45 degrees to your, you know, well, 90 degree thing. And even then, I think he's not truly a quantum supercomputer. He has access in a probabilistic sense, like of a bunch of frames of all the possible universes, but he lacks the information that connects them. The entanglement between different universes that if you do something here, all these other universes also will be affected in a similar way. If you had a sufficiently uh, advanced quantum computer, could you do that? Oh yeah, quantum computer can easily do that. Just the human mind, no matter how spiritually powerful it is, <laughs> cannot do that, right? Mm. Because it still needs well, to understand it doesn't have the It exactly. doesn't have the infrastructure to do that. Because we don't, you know, what does it even feel like to, instead of yes and no, right? To your new answers along which you understand the universe to be maybe and maybe not. Is the quantum computer explanation for something like Doctor Strange is doing, is that a good one? Yeah. Why? Because in order to have access to the multiverse, and they've opened that kind of worms now, right, at the MCU. <laughs> they can do anything. Now. Um, <laughs> the, in order to really appreciate how the multiverse works, you need to be able to unlock the power of true sight, right? Like a quantum computer has this ability because it can shift its point of view. Every time we run a quantum algorithm through a quantum computer, all we are asking it to do is for the different components of that mini universe we have within it, made of a bunch of quantum bits, okay, just like the regular one. We can shift their point of view internally in any way we want, right? And then ask for an answer of some small part of it at the end. But during that 
rotation and shifting all that stuff is just like we are merging constructively or distractively and interfering multiple realities to get us to an answer where the Avengers win. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're trying to almost work backwards and say of all the possible ways to interfere, to create like constructive amplification, mm -hmm. just like for when you're looking for a solution to a difficult chemistry problem, materials problem, right? You're trying to throw away all the universes. I'm not making this up, okay? Yeah, actually, in the no, multiverse, yeah. one computer is going through the whole thing and it's like, I no, 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 suppress all these realities, right? That where we could have made different choices to get towards the answer because they don't seem very promising. And use quantum entanglement within that multiverse, which is built up of superposition. Okay, that's the first step of every quantum algorithm is you set up your little qubits you shift their point of view from a zero or one to a zero and one, mm -hmm. every single one of them. And then when you spread this out, it effectively tells you you're now in the full multiverse for this little, the full mini multiverse. Yeah, okay? in most situations. Exponential like, number of like realities yeah. for each of them. So like you're saying, it, it, like uh, in most situations, like in a chemistry class, you're only worried about the one universe that you're in because it's the only real, one you have access to. Also. It's the only one you have yeah. access to, and you can manipulate. And in this universe, there are um, laws and theories and rules that we know of, and so you don't have to search a multiverse worth of answers because to get what I combine, you know, uh, this chemical with that chemical, I know what's going to happen classically. But if you are looking for a deeper kind of understanding of the information, you can't take you can't have that assumption that this one is the right one. Do you know there's something uh, kind of morbid about this whole thing though? What do you mean? Yeah, I would like Marvel Studios to know this, that... Okay, I'll tell. The other universes... Oh, they, yeah, no... <laughs> they already exist, the one where things didn't go They well. all lost. That, that's, that, that was always a weird thing for me to focus on, where you lose in the overwhelming majority that's of right. in. Sorry. Winning in one, ironically, it seems short-sighted. Where it's, it's yeah. like, well, yeah. at least we saved our universe. Oh, well. Yeah, and sometimes, even in real life, that's all you can do. I suppose. This is happening in real life as well, for us. There's a lot of universes where things didn't go as planned. Why, why do you think quantum mechanics is often portrayed as like the most magic-y scientific field? Why is, why is it hmm. still... Why can something like Doctor Strange make that a mystical thing? Yeah. People still are like, oh, yeah. The answer, I guess, is pretty straightforward, right? We have been pursuing truth as a human race in all our facets, through religion, through science, right? Day-to-day -day problem solving, we have been pursuing truth, which means we have been trying to crystallize an understanding of a very specific subset of all possibilities. So when somebody comes along and says like, you've been doing this thing wrong at the meta level, right? You have not been pursuing understanding, which is the thing that allows you to explore the whole multiverse. You have been pursuing truth, which means you're going deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole, even though there is like an infinite number of rabbit holes. And how do you gain access to the rest of the rabbit holes who like, looked nothing like anything you've ever seen before. Yeah. Okay, and, and also there's the other aspect of it where the human biology and the way our machine learning works up here and all that stuff, and from prey and predator and evolution, we have been wired, such a terrible way to put it, but like we've been wired to, to automatically filter a lot of the, the possibilities out. Yeah, they're not useful to us as, exactly. an, or, as an organism. Spiros, thank you so much for joining me. It is always an absolute pleasure to talk with you, my it's friend. It's so much fun, Kyle. <laughs> every time, you know, we could go forever here. We, we, yeah, I feel we like every forever. time blow my mind a little bit more. Um, are you excited for the new Doctor Strange film? I'm, yeah, of course. We'd love to go and watch it, you know. If you're watching and you want to invite me to the premiere, both of us, can you, are you already going there? I will show probably. up in a cape. Okay, I like that. I actually know, Okay. I actually, <laughs> someone that I know is currently working on replicating all the props for a museum thing. Mm -hmm. So I saw Dr. Strange's cape yesterday and I touched it. <sighs> oh, and Ant-Man's helmet. 
Oh, and I held Stormbreaker, the one that Chris Hemsworth used. So we're not friends anymore, okay? <laughs> I can't. I thought we were you need friends. A card thing to get Come it. on, it's, man. I'll tell you about it after this. All right, great. Thank you, Spiros. Absolutely. My pleasure. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this here video. I could not do it without all of them. If you want to join the facility, if you want to drape on a silky white lab coat, see behind the scenes photos and bloopers, get private members only live streams with me, <laughs> not like that, but much more than that. You can go to patreon.com slash Kyle Hill and join the facility today. And hey, if you support us just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every week, a grand distinction. As you can see, there's many, 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 many hundreds of you, so I have no idea how I'm gonna pass the time. If you enjoyed this video at all, today is World Quantum Day. I was working, believe it or not, directly with the White House and other coordinated content, content creators all around the world. Go check out hashtag World Quantum Day to find many more videos like this one exploring this kooky crazy, but not, I guess, all not that much side of science. Oh, and also, uh, when I went to Disneyland, uh, I'm not a Disneyland guy, but Rise of the Resistance is literally the best ride I've ever been on in my life. Would I go back? No. <laughs>